you know, in Streams and Desert, one of the benefits that I've always seen of reading Streams is that it was one of the early collections of the devotionals of its time that the wife of a missionary had sat down and she had been in China with her husband and they had done for years missionary work and while he was dying she had collected these encouraging tidbits of devotionals that she had and when I've gone back to try to find the originals sometimes I can't find them so it's kind of a, a wonder you know and a beauty to see some of the devotionals that had been written in her day that today we only have collected in like Streams in the Desert or other collections rather than the entire volume of where it may have come from. So it's always interesting to me to see the faithfulness of those people that lived in their generation even as we are in ours, you know, seeking to share and to be inspired by what God would speak to us and to say to us today. In Streams, then believed they his words, they sang his praise. They soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, and he sent leanness into their soul. We read of Moses that he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Exactly the opposite was true of the children of Israel in this record. They endured only when the circumstances were favorable, when things went their way. They were largely governed by the things that appealed to their senses, by what they could see, touch, and feel, in place of resting in the invisible and eternal God. In the present day, there are those who live intermittent Christian lives because they have become occupied with the outward and center in circumstance. They go by their feelings and feel fed by what they input, in place of centering in God. God wants us more and more to see Him in everything and to call nothing small if it bears us His message. Here we read of the children of Israel. Then they believed His words. They did not believe till after they saw. When they saw Him work, then they believed. They really doubted God when they came to the Red Sea. But when God opened the way and led them across and they saw Pharaoh and his host drowned, then they believed. They led an up and down life because of this kind of faith. It was a faith that depended upon the circumstances and not the reality. This is not the kind of faith that God wants us to have. He wants us to trust Him at all times. The world says seeing is believing, but God wants us to believe in order to see. The psalmist said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Do you believe God only when the circumstances are favorable? Or do you believe no matter what the circumstances may be? Faith is to believe what we do not see, and the reward of this faith is to see what we believe. There are people who are, as baby Christians, only content to prove that God exists by what some would say kismets, what some would say coincidence, what some would say accidental happenings that all seem to come to a conclusion where they have to say, wait a minute, this happens so often that it must be something more than just what comes around goes around, that it must be something more than kismet or some idealism of some other religion, but that it must be someone orchestrating the events behind the scenes. And you know, to prove God in some ways, that's okay. So if you're caught up into circumstances where you have to keep demonstrating to yourself that God really is true and that he exists and that he's working in your life and he intervenes in things, then make sure you do. Prove it. Be real. Be a scientist. Be exact. See if God doesn't meet you where you're at and prove by circumstance that whatever he said fits exactly the way he said into your life. One of the challenges that we make in devotional is to say, look, if it fits, do it. If God is speaking to you through circumstance, then do that and meet God there. But don't stay there. Because once you've proven that God exists, then prove that he can speak to you. Keep going on with what you have proven to yourself to be true. Because it's not enough to think that, oh, I can go to church or I can be religious 
and to think that you're going to find yourself one day in the sweet by and by in heaven, whether you want to or not. But the reality is, is that God is a human, is is a person, and that He demonstrated Himself in the person of Jesus Christ, being a human being as the Son of Man, but also being the Son of God, so that He could reveal His Father to you. If you don't know that God is real, then take the circumstances and see if they fit in your life. If it works, do it. If it doesn't work, then don't do it. It's that simple. Christianity was never meant to be one of, oh my God, I'm forced into this issue. No, it's one of your personal choice that you have made intelligently, intellectually, made with that little bit of faith that you, God had given you from the moment you were born, a measure of faith, so that you could examine whether or not these statements that Jesus made are true and then examine it in your life to see if God really does intervene. If he doesn't, then don't believe in him. But if God does intervene, then take him at his word and go farther because God wants you to know him not just in a circumstantial way, but a personal way where you could actually hear God speak to you. That is the goal. One day you will see God. Will you know <laughs> in that day that you have heard his voice? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. The choice is yours.